Hello guys, I hope you're all doing fine and dandy out there and welcome to uh, Dan's Haunted Cottage. So, doing another vlog today. And today I'm doing it from the pretty little town of Buckingham. A couple of reasons I came here. One of them wasn't that great to be honest, so I didn't vlog it. It was a second-hand bookshop that was in a 15th century um, building, um, chancel, but it wasn't that great. The building itself was tiny. Beautiful, beautiful structure but absolutely tiny, it wouldn't have taken more than a few seconds to walk around that. So today we come to the old jail because there's an exhibition here of a lady whose writings I absolutely love. I'm sorry about that sun in the background, that light. And that is one Flora Thompson. Now, I don't know if you've heard of Flora Thompson. She was a writer in the sort of 19th century, going into the Edwardian period, but sort of latter part of the 19th century anyway. And she wrote books called um, Lark Rise to Candleford, which is absolutely amazing. I think they made a TV series out of it. A few years back but uh, yeah I love her writings and it's sort of a semi-autobiographical tale of her childhood and growing up in what was a dying Oxfordshire, Oxfordshire um, rural area at the time so let's go inside and see what she's got actually I'll show you what so we we're here Buckingham Old Jail and it is quite a quaint little town to be fair but let's go inside and have a look at Flora's stuff. So we've just come up the stairwell. We're inside the museum now. We're making our way up. Lots of, I'll show you when I get up here, actually. I've got a picture of a jailer here, because it did serve as a jail at one point. Um, I think it was 19th century. So, let's just turn around. See if there's a jailer. Tainted coming up, up the steps. A lady with a candle. Let's have a look, see if we can find Flora's stuff. So fossils, lots and lots of fossils that they found in the local area, geology around Buckingham. And through here there's more fossils, as you can see, it's like a diorama of a dig I think. Hello Willow, you alright? You look at the floor of stuff, and the tusks. Ice Age gravel was ever found in Oxfordshire. I know, cool, isn't it? Then we've got some looks like um, Iron Age stuff, axe heads and what have you. Pretty, pretty cool. Oh, look at that Saxon saucer brooch. That is beautiful. Look at that. What do you think, Willow? Is it gorgeous? It's amazing, isn't it? And over here, got some pots. I'm guessing from the, yes, from the Roman period. And a bit of a mosaic there. Modern mosaic there. But yeah, they've got some amazing stuff in here. For a tiny little museum. Well, they have made the right choices, I think. So we go through here, into this, it's only a tiny little museum, which is why I can probably video it all. Uh, Viking spearhead, that's pretty cool. They don't like it up them, you know. And over here, we have a chap over here. I don't know what he's doing. Looks like he's smelting and minting. He is. He's making coins. Look at these. These are from the coins from the Lembutter Horde. That's pretty cool. Imagine turning up something like that, a pot of this. You'd be cock a hoop. Your cock wouldn't have been so hooped in his life. Look at these. Fantastic. And over here, Rumbody, Buckingham's infant saint. Baby saint of Buckinghamshire. And then we've got these down here. Anglo-Saxon stuff. Medieval stuff. A silver groat, or fourpence, I say, Edward III. So it's pretty cool here. Oh God, I love this stuff. And then, look, there's an old jail door there. Look at this. Oh, that is very cool. That's amazing. Look at that. Look at the stud work on it. I guess you're, you're allowed to put their food on there and then I'll come in. Pretty cool. Not if you're on the other side of it. Lots of stuff here, some medieval stuff here, which is pretty cool. Elizabeth the first half groat, 
Oh, those, we were talking about those at school when I was a kid. They were like, you didn't have one of those in your house, you wouldn't have fire insurance, they just let you burn to the ground. Uh, things have changed, luckily. This is obviously the prison landing. It's pretty cool. And then, and then this is the landing here, look. Oh, there's a, it's a police officer or a jailer at the end. Have a look at that. Give you an idea of what it's like walking through here. and poachers, John Scrolls Wesley. John Wesley of Buckingham became a well-known local character in the town and one of the old jail's most colourful inmates. So he served a bit of time in here. He'd served in the infantry for eight or nine years, had to leave because of injury to his leg that proved to be permanently damaged. After military service, he returned to Buckingham where he seemed to live without any employment or any visible means of support poaching, I should imagine. Let's go through here. Oh, here we go. Then we're getting into the Civil War period. 1600s. Cavalier. Cassid. I'm sure that could be, a, it looks like a parliamentarian, I'm not sure. Looks like one. That's definitely, is that meant to be King Charles I? I kind of guess it probably is, isn't it? And his queen. It was Catholic, which I think is what all the uproar was about, to be honest. Another one of those insurance plaques. Oh, look, that's a dress of wedding veil. That's pretty. It's very well preserved for its age. And over here, oh, I used to have one of those smocks. And I uh, got rid of it, but now I want to get another one. I think they're just cool. It's a piece of history, a piece of rural history. They're just fantastic. So I want to get one of those. Yeah, lots and lots going on here. Stop here now and go outside. Here we have a police officer. Good evening all. Now he would have been, I'm guessing he would have been a peeler. Place whistle. It's very cool. And then we've got, oh look, first of all, what's that? Wipers Times, I've got a copy of that at home, that's fantastic. That's some pretty cool stuff in here. Excuse my shadow, you guys reflecting onto the glass, not a lot I can do about that. But it's very cool. The Russian boats, apparently. From uh, 1919. And then, oh right, so this, ah, so this looks like a prison, uh, the prison office, I don't know what you call it. So we've got some notices up there. And we've got, yeah, oh, hello, how are you, hello. Turn around again, so you don't look at my ugly mug. And you've got the, coming more up to date there, the more, more up to date police officer's helmet. The police officer's cap, Thames Valley Police. Oval teeny, I still enjoy that today, I must say. I'm a bit of an old girl. And sarsaparilla, lovely. Right, so as I say, there's not a lot in here. You can do it just by turning around, basically. So let's go in here now. And then here, this is sort of Victorian period now, I think. Looks it. Stuff in there. Some stuff here, Lord Mayor's stuff, Lord Mayor's robes, and a uh, little mouse, a <laughs> jigsaw, and a mace, and a prison door again, a cell door, I should say. Very cool, guys. So, guys, this looks like the condemned cell, actually. And if you look at the uh, mannequins, you can see that there's a prisoner in the middle. The chap on the left is Brown Willis. 
and the chap on the right is um, a constable and he has his, um, I don't know what you call it, his staff of office that he's holding in his hands there. So this was it, this was the grim reality of what life was like in prisons back in the, well looking at his clothing, I'm guessing that's sort of 18th century really, so yeah, you're looking at the 1700s. Got a chain of ball there, I like to call it a hazel. Hello Hazel. And um, if you look here, there's a picture of two men posing in the stocks at Thornborough. It was 1908, so that's, that's not that long ago, is it? And there was one guy in here, Lord. Let's have a look, what's his name? Um, Brown, da 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 da. Well, anyway, I think he tried to strangle his girlfriend or something. But I think he was a poacher as well. Um, I'll try and find it for you. Oh, apparently a sheep was the jail's most unusual inmate. Sheep and cattle drove in from Wales along Welsh Lane to the markets of Buckingham. Newport, Pagnall and London declined as the railway network spread for a time. Oh, okay. So the sheep near his prison, eh? Well, not he did. Might as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb, I guess. <laughs> Sheep of a man. Yeah, that, that's bad. Right. So there's a deportation cell as well, apparently. So this cell was for either. So William Stevens, who had slit his own throat after murdering his girlfriend, Annie Leeson, after his trial. Stevens became the last prisoner to be hanged above the Great Gate of Aylesbury Jail on the 5th of August, 1864. To be honest, sounds like he deserved it. Would that have been horrible? Just don't go around cutting people's throats, do you? But very interesting piece of history. And very, very interesting and yet creepy exhibit. I like it. I'd love to do an investigation here. I'm going to find out whether it's possible actually. I'll lock a lot down in here for an evening. See what you get. I bet you get something. Right, let's have a look see if we can find floor stuff once again in the landing. With the jail doors all the way along. All the way to there, there, even. And you go down the stairs. There's some more cell doors down here. Oh, I'll be jail by the look of it. They must have had many near do wells in this town to uh, warrant that many jail doors. I guess that's where they brought them in. Drawing from disorderly, thieving, all sorts of stuff. Oh, it's a Royal Hassan's, Bucks Hassan's drum, you know? Battle drum, that's good. So as you can see, so they've got quite a collection in here and you can see it was definitely um, a series of prison cells or a jail that was for the, the town in the early days. And um, obviously it's still got lots of remnants. The doors are here and the infrastructure of the building is still here. So it's a very, very historical building. And uh, even though it's tiny, they've got quite a lot crammed into it. Um, and they do take you through different periods of the town. So you go right from the sort of Viking Stone Age right the way through to the Iron Age, right the way through to the Vikings, and all the way through to up to, to modern day. Um, and a lot of it is Victorian, purely and simply, because I think that the jail itself was um, very, was early Victorian. But it's very, very cool. Um, yeah, I'm sorry that there's, there's not tons of it, but let's go and see Flora stuff, because that's, that's what I've come to see. I've come to see her stuff, because, yeah, I... Uh, Love Flora Thompson's writings, as I said, as I said earlier. So let's go and have a look at that. That'd be pretty cool to see her stuff. Let's have a look at that sun behind me. Right. There's Flora stuff. Can you see Flora stuff, Hazel? No? Be excited to be honest. Love Flora Thompson. Love her writings. Anyway, let's have a look at some of the artifacts that they've got in here, apart from Flora. Yes, I have found the Flora Thompson room and it's crammed with Flora Thompson memorabilia. There are some people in there at a minute, um, but once they've uh, vacated, I'm gonna go in there and we'll have a darn good look at it. Very excited about Flora Thompson stuff. Superb. Right, so looking in here, and obviously there's some props on the BBC that they donated to the museum for use as an exhibit. Um, I'll turn you around and have a look. There you go, so these are the uh, Olivia Hallinan, who played Laura Timmins, that was the dress that she wore, that was one of the costumes. Here's the, yeah. Gap, I think they're called. Okay. Which is the B thing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and the postman's hat. Yeah. So 
we see a lot of these props not to be um, of the period actually. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And we've got a collection of the books. Oh, so there's some that are actually signed by her, I don't know. It's dedicated to people by her. And a letter. That is very cool. Lots of stuff. Oh, that's really fantastic. Look at these more. They're Victorian toys. There's some more long ones to can of recipe books. And over here, I believe we have some of her personal items. Let's have a look. Yeah. Oh, well, that's the typewriter that she wrote like wise to can of it on. That's the actual typewriter that she wrote it on, typed it on. And then you've got stuff going through over here, her watch, her cup, her dress, very sort of 1920s. She was getting on by then though, I think. And some photos of her, I guess, her parents or, and some of her family. So Edwin Timms, that was her brother, he got killed, didn't he? I think it was the, did he get killed in the First World War, her brother? I'm not sure. He was Canadian Division, yeah, I think, yeah. And there you go. Over here. These are some of the original artifacts of her. Mrs. Anne Barrett was the wife of the tenant farmer on the Stowe estate. And she was a talented and prolific needlewoman and lace maker. She was indeed. Look at this stuff. Beautiful. Look at that Christian dress. That is gorgeous. Look at that. Beautiful stuff. And the dress there. Now you can see Willow's open the drawers and we have been told that she kids are allowed to have a look in there. And over here we have some bobbins, pretty cool. Lots and lots of stuff, but let's go back to, and over here is the BBC TV drama. That's the series. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Guys, I don't know if you're in the States, you may have seen it. I'm not too sure. Look it up. It's absolutely, the story itself is fantastic. If you can get the book, it's absolutely superb. Um, I've got a few of her books at home. I absolutely love reading them. It really sort of takes you back to a time that seemed gentler. It probably wasn't. It was probably really, really hard, I would imagine, and grim. But it just seemed gentler than today's time. Just have a look at the floor and stuff again. So there. Yeah. There you go. Oh, Hazel, this is the this is the typewriter she wrote like Wise to Canopy on. Yeah, Hazel's not really out of, not really that keen on history. I think it's a loss when you're not keen on history. I think you miss out so much in life. History is who we are, where we've come from. It's always good to look back at it. Not live in it, but look back at it and remember. Fantastic. So this guys is the prison exercise yard. Pretty grim. Horse brass. I can't horse brass is up in the wall now. This is the exercise yard itself. We're sick of her, right? We've had enough of her. We're dressing up like a. We're going to put her in here as a prisoner. We've had enough of her. Sick of her. Wow, 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 wow. Just like a blinking mother. Right. There see. you go. Look at you, don't you? You look. Fox is all done like a prisoner. Willow's getting done like a prisoner now. We must take some photos of those in a minute. Look, there's Willow. You, that suits you actually, Willow. There's a ball and chain in there, should I go and get it? There you go. And that is our little prisoners. Oh dear, how I wish it were. So Fox is now going in the stocks. Fox in the stocks. Fox has been in the stocks. Well, he's going back in them. Let's have a look. Are you going in the stocks, Fox? Fox in the stocks. And Hazel's going to pelt him with stuff. Go, boom, boom. He was, he was stealing my sheep. Boom. He was stealing my sheep. This, this is the boom. This is the reason. Uh, don't talk to me, offender. Go away, offender. This is the uh, prisoner. Reason. Go away, prisoner. This is the reason why I get in prison. Oh no. You were sheep stealing. Oh, you see, I knew it. Obviously it comes from your mother because she's Welsh. Sorry about that guys, I had to get that in. So let's see Willow, Willow's going to get pelted now. 
Sheep stealing, Hazel. Fox is looking for an escape route, there's his plan there. Oh, he's going to throw stuff at his sister. Hang on, I don't think, oh, there you go. I don't think other prisoners can throw stuff at other prisoners. I don't think that's part of it. Oh dear. Ooh. Ooh. Send them to Australia. Australia. There you go. Nice. He's just shoving her mouth. Nice. Well, hello everybody, and uh, this is added on to the end of this video that I did on Saturday. It is now Monday, and uh, I didn't get the opportunity to add it to the video on Saturday. But all in all, we had a very good day, and I didn't get to say goodbye, so I'm going to do that on this video. Um, that's the reason for it. Uh, just to let you know at the end of the video, as though you probably didn't know that anyway, but I have to do that because... My mate Damon in, keeps insisting that I let everybody know when I've finished a video, and so that's what I'm doing, Damon. I hope it meets with your requirements. <laughs> so, yeah, no, we had a good day Saturday. It was lots and lots of fun. Um, started out not so great. The kids were in a mood. I don't know why. But just that time of the year, I think, or the moon was at its certain axis. I don't know, but they were gone a bit loopy. They were just anti-everything. But, um, yeah, we had a very good day in the end. It was very enjoyable. It was lovely walking around Buckingham and looking at the museum. As I say, we wanted to go there initially to look at a bookshop that was inside a 15th century, um, like, manse or part of a, a, a church building. But there wasn't really much left of the original building there. I think it had been destroyed in or somehow over the years. Um, but they did actually have a very, very beautiful um, and historical door that went into the building, which was dating dates back to Norman period. So you're looking at a thousand years. So, you know, that was pretty cool. But that was probably one of the only original bits left in it. Maybe two or three other bits, but nothing really. And it was tiny. So luckily enough, there was a, the, as you saw, the Flora Thompson exhibition, which I was highly, very excited about in case you didn't notice. Uh, so we went and did that, and then we finished off by having some dinner, and then came home. And um, yes, it was a, it was a very nice day. So just wanted to let you know, um, if you do get a chance to go to the exhibition, go along. Uh, as I said before in the early part of the video, um, Flora Thompson was a great writer, great author, and it was sort of semi autobiographical, and it was the it was kind of the remnants. Um, the stories were coming to the sort of leaving the 19th century, leaving the Victorian period, going to the very early part of the Edwardian period. And it was all about her childhood as she grew up, um, the environment she grew up in, which was a very rural one, um, tiny little village. And uh, about how the, how the little village was also affected by the town, um, which was probably about eight or nine miles from where she lived. But she walked there every day to go to work in the post office or sub post office. So that was interesting. Um, but it really is a reflection back on a, I think, probably a gentler time, but a time of mass change. The sort of old fashioned rural ways were coming to an end and were just about to be lost to memory. And these people were the, the last vestiges of it. And um, once they were gone, that, that period of history had just turned over a new page and uh, gone into the 20th century. But yeah, it was a, a lost rural community and time um, that we were looking at. So yeah, anyway, have a look at her books if you get the opportunity. Try and get one of her, two of her books out. They're beautifully written and um, I, I enjoy them. They might be more, I suppose a lot of people think that they're probably for the older generation or for old old ladies to read and it probably might be the case but they're a social document on the history of that period and as such i think that they're amazing and especially from a, a personal and an ordinary person's perspective it makes it that more realistic um so yeah have a look at them but anyway goodbye and i will speak to you all later i'll make another vlog as soon as i can bye